This is my eighth video on using PHP with the Yahoo Finance API. And what we've done in previous videos is we've grabbed all of the different stocks from Yahoo. We stored them to our database. We've gotten all of the different historical prices for all of the different stocks. We stored those to the database. And two videos prior to this one, we wrote the logic in order to calculate the winning and the losing streaks for each of these stocks. So you'll see if I click this streak button here, um, what it's going to do is it's going to show us all the losing streaks. If I click it again, we can sort it by the winning streaks. And just now I've written the code in order to calculate the move percentage and the streak volume. So what this move percentage represents right here is in the case of wage, it's gone up for the last 13 days. Over those 13 days, it's gone up 26.8%. And the amount of tr shares traded over those 13 days was this big number right here. So this move percentage column and the streak volume, they're directly related to this streak integer. We have the percentage that it's gone up over those 13 days and the shares that were traded over those 13 days. The same goes for the negative stocks. The exact same logic applies. We have this CEL right here, which has gone down eight days in a row. The move percentage over those eight days was 5.51. And then we have this volume right here. So what we're looking at right here is the update streaks function. Uh, we used this a couple videos ago in order to calculate the streaks. However, I've added a little bit to this function right now. We're going to do two new method calls at the bottom, which is going to calculate the move percentage and also calculate the streak volume. So that's what we're going to focus on in this video. Just in case any of you haven't seen the earlier videos in this series, I'm just going to summarize really quickly what's happening here. Within this summaries table right here, we have a, his we have a history of all of the different stocks prices. Um, so this is a massive table. It has 20 million different rows. And what I want to do is I want to get the most recent date from it um, because that is going to be the starting point for this big loop that we're going to do right here. And within MySQL, we can use the max function and we can get the most recent date. So what we're going to do is just grab the most recent date from this summaries. And this is also going to represent our most recent uh, cron job. So when we were you know, grabbing the new stock prices and then we were storing those new values to the summaries table, we're just getting the date that that happened on and we're doing that with the max function. The next thing on line 24 here, from within our stocks table, we're selecting all of the different symbols and we're going to order those alphabetically and we return an array of those to the stocks variable. Next what we do is we loop over all of those different stocks and within this logic right here we calculate the streak and we covered that in a previous video. So what we're going to do here is um, within this first function right here, calculate move percentage. What I'm going to pass to this is the days so if we go up a little bit here, um, we see the days variable right here. What this is doing is it's going into the summaries table and it's grabbing the 20 most recent stock prices. So I'm making the assumption here that none of the stocks are going to have a winning or losing streak more than 20 days in a row. So I'm just putting a limit of 20 on this in order to save resources and make the script run faster. So this array of 20 is going to be passed in as the first parameter of this function and the second one is the streak so those get passed into the calculate move percentage function so let's just scroll down there now the first check that we're doing here is we're checking if streak is equal to zero obviously if the streak was equal to zero this can happen when the most current price and the day after it were the same price in that case their prices are equal I'm not counting it as a streak either way so we're just returning zero, that is going to be the move percentage. However, if that wasn't the case and the stock is on a winning or a losing streak, what we're going to do is we're going to come down here to line 136, and then we're going to pass that days array um, into the array slice right here, and we are going to start from the beginning of that array. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice out the streak plus one. The reason why we need to slice out the streak plus one is if you think about it, if the stock was on a winning streak of just one, so it's gone up one day in a row, we're not going to want to just grab the first element of the array. We're also going to want to grab the day before it as well, because that is going to we're going to need that to compare against the current day in order to know how much it's gone up to calculate the move percentage. 
Now in some cases it will be a negative value um, being passed in here. So because we're using the array slice uh, function right here, we're going to need a positive value as this third argument right here. So no matter we have a negative or a positive streak being passed in, we can force that to be a positive number using the abs function. So I just run abs on streak and then plus one, so we're comparing it to the day before. And then we return an array of those days. Finally, what I want to do is return the move percentage. We're doing that on line 138 right here. So what we're going to do is grab the first element of that array, which is the most recent date. And then we're going to divide that by the last element of the array. So whatever value we get right here, we're going to subtract 1 from it. And then we're going to multiply it by 100 and we're going to have our move percentage. This is going to give you a float with something like 10 decimals, but because I want only want this rounded to 2 decimals, we run the round function on it, and the second argument is a 2. So the second part to this is we're going to calculate the streak's volume over the days of that streak. So we're going to pass it an array of the 20 days, and also the streak. So if we come down here, um, the first thing we're doing is we're running array slice on the days we're starting from the beginning of the array and we're going to pull out um, the beginning elements of the array uh, to the amount of the streak. So what this is going to do is it's going to return us an array of only the days that it was on a streak and then we're initializing a volume variable to zero and then we're going to loop over all of those days it was on a streak and then we're going to keep appending to this volume variable um, the, vo the volume and finally we're just going to return uh, the total volume over the days of the street. Lastly, we just want to store all of this to the database. So within our stocks table, where the symbol is the one that's being iterated on, we're just updating the database here with the streaks value, the move percentage, the streaks volume, and also a date that the streak was stored. So we have a record of when was the last time that we stored the streak information. So let's go over the command line now and run this. I'm going to use the artisan command that I used in a previous video. Um, it's called SS Update Streaks. This art right here is just an alias that I've created. Um, it's short for PHP Artisan. So PHP Artisan SS Update Streaks. And then I've added this force option, um, which is just going to overwrite the streaks if I already have it for the day. Um, it's not going to hurt anything. So just run this here and we'll just give it a minute. So you can see all of those things are being stored right now. Um, it's a little bit hard to read, but we have, we're have we actually showing the symbol name, the streak value, uh, the percentage move, and also the volume. So that's going to take a couple minutes to run, and actually I already have them stored in the database. So they're just overwriting the values that are already there. So the last thing that I had to do for this, which I'm not going to cover in this video because it's a little bit tiresome, was basically checking all of these different values, the streaks that I had, the move percentages, and the streak volumes. And then I was going over to finance.yahoo.com and just comparing the values here. I was you know, adding up the closing prices here, pulling out a calculator, and comparing those values against the ones that I had on my website. So I think I'm just going to leave it at that for this video. And in the next video, which might be the last one of this series, what we're going to do is we're going to write a cron. So these scripts are run automatically um, whenever the stock market closes.